There we go. Ho, 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 everybody. It's our holiday poetry open mic here at Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. I see my mom waving at me already. Welcome to one and all for our final reading of 2022. I'm your host for today's festivity, Sandy Anon, here for Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Again, always, 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 with immense thanks to Kim Ports Parsons and Don Krieger and every single one of you joining us here on live here in Zoom and on Facebook. And of course, if you're watching a little later, thanks for tuning in to our holiday poetry open house or otherwise known as ho 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 or ho 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 our holiday poetry open house well we've been gathering together most sundays throughout this year bringing you poetry from around the world the tremendous tremendous voices and 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 people here in the poetry community um that do so much to encourage, promote, elevate, amplify, share and build community and the prospects of peace throughout the world right here on our little Zoom screens on Sunday. I am more, most, most humbled to be able to say your names, hear your poetry every, you know, on, on the Sundays where we have the programs. And it's been a pleasure to be able to now say, here we are for our third annual poetry celebration. Well, let's get to it so that we can hear as much poetry as possible in the, in the 90 minutes that we have together, folks, Obviously, today's theme is the celebration of, 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 of poetry and, and bringing peace and goodwill and solidarity to all, spreading peace for poetry. And of course, to take a line from Don Krieger, celebrating our shared humanity. Well, we've got amazing special guests today, but every single person reading today is special. But let me give you a little teaser of who you'll hear from our special guest today. We'll be hearing from Patrick Lodge, Yorkshire, Anne McDonald, from Ireland, Elaine Nadal, here in the US, Josephine Lore from Calgary, Linda V. Crawford from here in the States and Thomas A. Thomas from right down the street here in Olympia, Washington. And throughout the program, we'll also today have some special, special holiday gifts and giveaways for a few of you here in our audience. Well, so let's get to it, shall we? Our first our first reader in the open mic, our open mic readers today, and thank you because you all as well are our special guests. Um, our first reader for today will be none other than the amazing Brian Franco. Thank you, Sandy. Um, well, this is kind of a silly poem, but... It's a, it's a holiday poem. It's called Twas the Truth About Christmas. Uh, I hope it doesn't offend anyone. Twas the truth about Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas when in the North Pole, a strange, mysterious wind did blow 
Then Santa's pet emus buried their heads in the snow. The reindeer got loose and ate every dreidel from the Hanukkah bushes. Mrs. Claus got drunk and pinched all the male elves on their tushes. The lady elves later found her, passed out in her easy chair, threw multicolored dicks on her face with sharpies, and cut off her hair. This year, Santa secretly bought a dozen drones to fly presents down chimneys so he wouldn't dirty his suit, making his yearly thousand-dollar dry cleaning bill moot. He hovered over houses and directed drones with a remote control. He was saving so much time he yelled, Hell yeah, Santa baby, rock and roll! What happened next qualified as a Christmas clusterfuck when the reindeer started sporadically dropping nitrates from their bus. The Jewish toy broke skylights, damaged roofs, and countless cars. To mention poor Santa's therapy scars. The whole situation caused Santa enormous guilt and shame, despite the fact that the Gentiles learned to play the dreadful game. Insurance paid off damages since no one believed in old Chris Kringle, a fact that made Santa smile and gave his soul a little tinkle. He got home and saw empty schnapps bottles next to his unconscious wife, then told himself that for the most part, he lived a pretty decent life. It was the morning after the night before Christmas when Santa discovered his beloved emus had frozen to death after burying their heads in the snow, which was the tip of an iceberg of traumatic emotional blows. So he plucked their feathers and carved out enough stakes for a year and fixed himself, fixed himself a sesame bagel with locks, onions, and a nice schmear. While he drank his coffee, he asked the missus about the dicks drawn on her face. She railed about the elf bitches and how she'd put them all in their place. He just smiled at her, nodded yes, and fantasized about changing his name and face, then running off to Rio de Janeiro, disappearing without a trace. Yes, this story is 100% true, and now the truth is out that Santa is a Jew. Thank you. And I would also like to say that my next Cafe Generalissimo is tomorrow. I'll put the information. Thank you. That's Generalissimo, Brian Franco. And uh, thanks for your contributions this year, Cultivating Voices Live Poetry, and, and for all you do in Poetic Community. Amazing work that you do and I've been so grateful when you've been on the program. Thank you. Next are in the open mic. Oh, again, if you I, I hope that you were here for her new book showcase reading this year. But if not, of course you can always go to the recordings and I highly recommend. Uh, welcome, Marjorie Maddox. Thank you so much, Sandy. Um, this is another poem from Begin With the Question, uh, one of my newer books. And um, this was inspired by a quote from uh, Leonard Cohen. So, traveling man. I'm, I'm hearing some background noise. Can you hear me? You can hear me? Okay. A traveling man. He was just some Joseph looking for a manger. Leonard Cohen, Stranger Song. 70 plus sandal, 70 plus sandal stepping, donkey plodding miles to that hilltop town on a ridge near the edge of a desert, spread with the disbelief of all his neighbors. No gambler, though that's what the others claim. And yet this Joseph, even after the cat calls of no room, no room, and still convinced of the predestined roll of dice chrismated with miracle, keeps walking with his, not his woman, forever strangers in this hometown that will not welcome them, will not lay them down to sleep. The midnight music, merely cows lowing, merely the jazzy constellation of stars. Thanks. Wonderful. Reminding me, thank you so much, Marjorie. Uh, Reminding me, of course, of our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful oh, poet's focus that we had on the theme of stars to begin this month of December. Thanks for evoking that and bringing that back. Uh, and we look forward to seeing and hearing more of you from you in 2023. Well, our next uh, our next poet, I'm so glad you're here on the open mic. 
Marcella Raymond. Happy holidays to you, my dear friend. Oh, thank you, Sandy. It's really wonderful to be here. Um, and um, this has been quite a year. I'm coming to you from South Dakota, um, which is the traditional lands of the Santee Dakota, the Yankton Nakota, and the Teton Lakota people, um, referred to as the Sioux. And I have a little poem about winter because we're in the deep freeze here too right now um, with piles and piles of snow. And while most people hate it, um, I really kind of love winter. So this poem is called In Defense of Winter. In the sudden perfect quiet, people with their constant nervous noise retreat inside. Houses are shuttered, sealed, blanketed. Traffic slows to an occasional hushed, slushing past. But even then, car windows are rolled up against the wind and the human barrage of talk, 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 the radio's thump crash whine safely sealed away. Blue and bitter cold flushes skin with blood, numbs fingers, pinches ear tips. Shivering reminds us we are animals. Our bodies know what to do. Winter purifies, preserves, resets us on its clean slate. Back inside it's warm, winter's contrast, survival's temporary truce. Breath turns brush on icy windows every surface a canvas. Into the jeweled night, we don layers, boots, and masks, walk out in the snowdrift dark. We meet one another, dog walker, who keeps to her side of the street, gives a quick gloved wave, moves on. All is reverie, moving contemplation of shapes and signs in crushed diamonds. Moonlight and starlight refracted in a landscape of prisms. The wheel of living and dying returns. Winter freezes all to glass, suspends and wraps in snow, or breaks into our sorrows, failures, decay and detritus, summer strokes that get us nowhere. But prairie people know rebirth only comes from death and winter's death is tender, peaceful, and blooming with hope. Thank you. Thank you. That's a beautiful poem from Marcella Raymond. Marcella joined us also here many, many times. And we also featured you in that in new book showcase. Everybody feel free to put links to your books, to the publications you put out, your upcoming readings, reading series. Please feel free to put those in the chat. And of course, always feel free to post those things as well to Cultivating Voices Live Poetry with us on Facebook. And a reminder, the chat here in Zoom is very active, and, but as we always say, send the love to everybody, and particularly today, it's our Cultivating Voices Live Poetry, ho, 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 our holiday poetry open house here on the cusp of Hanukkah. Beautiful. Well, I am so grateful for our special guests that we've had assembled here today. And our first guest, oh gosh, we have, as we said, an, an abundance of riches, a cornucopia of poetry today. Our first guest today is none other than Patrick Lodge. And I, I remember hearing Patrick for the very first time here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry, and and for me it was this 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 moment where I felt immediately connected to a person whom I'd never met, and 
just have continued to just marvel and appreciate um, the poetry in the community that uh, Patrick creates. Uh, a little more about Patrick in the form of bio. Dr. Patrick Lodge is an Irish Welsh poet whose work has been published anthologized and translated into several countries. He's read at international poetry festivals, been successful in the UK and Irish poetry competitions, and won the 2021 Poetry on the Lake short story competition. He reviews for poetry magazines and has judged international competitions. His collections are an anniversary of flight, shenanigans, and the book that we heard in one of our new book showcases, Remarkable Occurrences from Valley Press. His newest collection that he's working on is Arcana. Would you please welcome Patrick Lodge? Dear, dear, thank you very much, Sandy. That doesn't sound at all like me at all, but it's an honor to be asked to read tonight. And many thanks to, to Sandy, to Kim and to Don. I think there's a special place in, in poet's heaven for you. Uh, I don't write a lot directly about peace, but I've chosen some poems which for me pay homage to human love, to hope and resilience. And the first one is called Mauerfall, which is German. Literally, it means wall fall, but there's only one wall that fell in Germany, and that was the Berlin Wall. And this was a poem I wrote for my, my last child, uh, my second daughter, Alice Grace, who was born on the day that the Berlin Wall fell. And I can remember uh, back then such feelings of, of hope that the world was getting better. <clears throat> Mauerfall. We watch the news from Berlin. Walls fall in Potsdamer Platz. People swarm like woodpeckers, chiseling and drilling, expecting to fly free. Cement becomes elemental, fleshy. It dilates, and the dispossessed push through. Wir sind dein Volk, they sing, tickled at this old world become new. You were only a few hours born laid like proving dough on my chest, breathing unhurried, eyes closed with womb dreams, for once at rest. Thank you very much. And kind of continuing that theme, this is a poem just called Anea, which is the name of my newest granddaughter. This is a poem about, um, about her, um, Anea. How is it that this joyous beginning encourages thoughts of endings? Inevitable, I suppose, holding you in two clumsy hands, only hours old, postpartum perfection emerging. It seems stages of this tour are completing, boxes being ticked, batons being passed on, though the cliches are a loose fit. Naked you may have come into this world, but never alone. As for me, I'll take my leave in old pajamas or a baggy hospital gown, knowing less than you do now, and who knows what draw I'll be at the final curtain. Here's me slowing down, humping the debris of decades. They were right, it's a drag. But you, from that first slick slide into the light, into your becoming, you can only accelerate from here. A million neural connections a second sparking crosses in this synaptic bingo game. Your mouth already an O of wonder, your eyes perfect sky, limitless, going in and out of focus, looking for clues, then suddenly staring at me like it could after all, make sense. Here, Anea, let me look in my bag. Find my best day of the 25,000 odd I've managed to lose someplace. You can have it, a gift, something to start you off with. 
And the final poem I'll read is one called What Remained. And it's a kind of love poem, I suppose, to a fellow poet I met at a, uh, an international festival in Kosovo. And there are references in it to an event from 1803 uh, in the Greek War of Independence, when, when Greek women and children trapped by Ottoman troops, Turkish troops near Zalongo in Epirus, uh, rather than submit, decided to turn towards the cliff's edge with their infants and dance one of those incredible Greek circle dances over the edge one by one, rather than submit to the Ottoman troops. This is called What Remained, and it's for Marilena. All the flight, I watched your smile, even at takeoff when all is suspenseful, when past and present mock each other's pretensions of confidence. I looked at your eyes too, they were deeper than Lethe, never chill, but I could not forget anything. Certainly not the women who looked like you, as you stood on the vineyard roof close to the brink. The women who held hands to dance in circles to the cliff edge, singing for themselves alone in love, not desperation, whose eyes though were dead, whose smiles were fixed against a worse world, who placed their hopes only in the sustaining lightness of air, like that air which held a tiny cloud far below the plain, so lost between sky and parched earth that I had to stare hard past the wing into the vivid sun, flooding the world with carmine so as not to cry for it. And for what remained, so light, so light it could not be kept hold of. Arms had tried as if it was heavy and dense, but must, like all love, eventually be free. Thanks very much, everybody. And thanks particularly to Sandy, Kim, and Don. Thank you. Happy holidays to you, my friend. That's Patrick Lodge with his poetry of remarkable occurrences. It's a remarkable, any, it's a remarkable day when I get to hear your poetry, of course. Again, happy holidays to you. Well, folks, today we've got a few gifts for some folks in our happy audience today. We so do, we do, Sam. we do. Go right ahead, Kim. So our guest readers are going to help us with some of these. Patrick, please choose a number between one and ten. Oh, there we go. I'll go for my lucky number of seven. Seven. Okay. Our first gift goes to Patricia Carrigan, and it is a gorgeous copy of December, the fall winter issue, a literary magazine since 1958. Patricia will be in touch after the program to send you this gorgeous Ooh. magazine for your enjoyment. And that is our first prize. Thank you. Congratulations, Patricia Kerrigan. I love, I love that we're able to gift some things today to audience members here and in Zoom. And I love that our first is a literary journal for the month of December. <laughs> I just absolutely love it. It's perfect because here we are for our poetry, our holiday poetry, open house here on Cultivating Voices, live poetry. Live is always, always the operative word. And this, of course, is what we, always aspire to have like just on the the edge of our tongues and and then on the just on the cusp of our ears we get to hear poetry live you've seen so many performances here that uh, that are performances and um 
grateful every week when we get to see something that it's really different than when we read it on the page. So let's get back to our holiday poetry open micers. And for our next round in the open mic, we will begin with the amazing, amazing Julio Magrini. We heard from Julio for in our new book showcase this year, also from your fabulous collection, The Color of Dirt. Happy holidays to you, my friend, joining us from Thanks. Pittsburgh. And folks, yeah, share where you're joining from too, because I, I love everybody to know where we're hearing voices from on the program. Thank you, Sandy. Happy holidays to everyone from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I've selected uh, today, more and more, I see my fog face in my own. This is for the images you see and the face and the faces of your family. Vivono per sempre in noi, nei nostri campi toscani. They will live forever in us, in our Tuscan fields. My every sneeze, a revelation. Papadino's reemergence from death escapes with the sound of my resurrected gasp. From his throat, lips, and tightened face, he lives in my skin as before, but not the facade alone. My aging cause wonders of his discontinued comfort as I nightmare through darkness, the lurking fiend senior living examines my restless sleep. Bouquets of urine get stronger, partial and faulty memories bash in chaos with mercy. Papadino's smile and sneeze and his manner of living carries our lives both in death and in my withering body, his simultaneous dead sound through me, still alive and annoyed at the offered blessings. My plotting expressions are all I have left, and these memories stuck in my person and the person of Papadino, his puzzle of death living through me as I most certainly degrade to his status, slipping to a union with his love. Who will I transfer my sneeze, my smile, my motions to? The answer is what? Bequeathed wisteria gardens of Firenze, poppies of Castiglione della Pescaia, I will join Papa and burst with our tall Cypress friends to examine our intimacies forever. We will be what we become eternally, near Maltalcino, discussing the wines that year. There will be no loving traces in form, our mortal bonds released to the sentinel eyes of Bougainvillea to observe the tourists as they weave delight amongst us. My sunflowers in fields of wonder gather their amber storm of waves to shine love on a moving other, and we all shall rest on the raptured couplet of Papadino e suo figlio Giulio, vivono per sempre in noi, nei nostri campi Tuscani, Papadino, and his son Julio, they will live forever in us, in our Tuscan fields. I love you all. Oh, oh, that is, that is just stunning. That is stunning. Julio Magrini, everyone. I send love. And grazie, 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 grazie. Happy holidays, my friend. 
I'll see you in the new year. Well, our next open mic reader, I believe this is her debut reading here on Cultivating Voices, but she is no stranger to the Zoom room. She's very dedicated Cultivating Voices live member. None other than Carol Yanone. <laughs> I'm so excited that you signed up. <laughs> well, I decided it was now or never. So <laughs> you were the poet in the family. I don't want to take anything from you, and I don't think I can. But all the years you studied, I watched you and didn't have time to write my own poetry, bringing up three children and working and uh, this poem that I'm reading today is actually one that I won an honorable mention for in my high school. It was um, called the Poetry um, Little Workbook. I don't know if it can, there it is. I don't know if I can get it not to show well, but I mean to show well. But I'm actually following the theme of the stars um, which I couldn't find this poem that week. <laughs> so I'm going to read this. It's a very short one. And I also want to tell you, I'm calling from, I'm coming in from Old Saber, Connecticut, which is our home. And it's very cold here, but at least the sun is shining a little bit. Um, this is called Dark Night. And I just changed the page on it. There it goes. <laughs> Dark night, ceaseless in wonders. Many long hours I have gazed, pondering at your stars. The showery hiatus, the glowing dippers seem to sparkle like diamonds freshly cut. Dark night, fearful to me, how can I walk with only stars as guides? My body trembles in your dampness and my fear returns with the shadows cast by the moon among the trees. And even though you frighten me, I love you still, dark night. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Everybody, you have witnessed the debut of Caroline Wong's <laughs> poetry here on Cultivated Voices Live poetry. Oh, I'm, I'm like kind of choking up here, but thank you. I love you so much. And thanks for reading the poem. What a what a gift to our community today. And thank always, you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Okay. See, I don't know why that poem only got an honorable mention. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Next. Great debut. Come back and read again in the open mic. We go to our artful dodger, Harvey Sasu. Again, so many memorable readings from Harvey this year. I'm I'm so grateful for your dedication to this group. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. Same to you. And how can anyone fail to be knocked out by the one-two punch of the Yanon family? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, hard to follow that and stay on my feet. Uh, I, I've posted, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of it, uh, an invitation to the next, uh, I guess, chapter uh, uh, of uh, the uh, Artful Dodgers Open Mic series, which I host from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, probably it will be on the third Saturday of the month Sometime during the week, I'll probably put it on Eventbrite, but uh, I hope you'll join us. Uh, this one is sort of dedicated to those women who uh, work behind the scenes to stitch together peace efforts. Uh, I had forgotten that I wrote this when I was looking for something peaceful among all my uh, warlike rumblings. Uh, <laughs> but it's called Modesto Knitting Circle. During World Wars I and II in the Korean dust-up, they would send mittens to our boys, 
courtesy of the Modesto coven of such softness and quality, government procurement agencies might justly be accused of prolonging conflicts in order to obtain more woolly accessories. After Katrina, with its breaching of levees, the Army Corps of Engineers, hands half frozen from plugging dikes, found warmth in these ladies' gifts, shared with aid workers, tasked with beating back a tide of homelessness, the sudden impact of two cool jazz seemingly gentled by wool gauntlets. Recipients have been known to compare the experience to stroking kittens, others to incomparable sex. Modesto's trippy den mothers, needles kept within easy reach like sticks of heroin addicts, are ecumenical in their approach. One moment knitting black and yellow B-striped sweaters and the next don't tread on me needle points for survivalists. Of course, in the absence of any newsworthy catastrophe demanding of their skills, a rare occurrence in California's Central Valley, what with its mudslides, fires, and floods, each grounds for a knit and pearl. They also churn out magical hats, scarves, and booties, pending the arrival of those walnut-sized nieces and nephews foretold of by psychical sonograms. Along with the odd shawl for unregenerate hippies living out of their vans. It seems that all the colors of the rainbow and then some lie curled at their feet, virgin balls of yarn waiting to be fashioned into this or that maxim, an accepted principle of conduct or aphorism set into a wooden frame like keep it simple, stupid, which generally they did. There, there he is, the incomparable Harvey Sauce. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, always check out Artful Dodger. I hope in 2023, I will have more time to be able to join myself because uh, I'm really eager to uh, participate in your reading series and thanks for all that you do. And again, thank you for all that you contribute here. As I mentioned, so many memorable readings during this year on Cultivating Voices, very grateful. Thank you and a happy holiday to all of you. Happy holidays to you. Well, folks, it's our holiday poetry open house. And we're we've we we're hearing from so many special guests, but we've we've also invited a few people to feature uh, for the program today. And my next guest, I'm so 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 grateful that um, that Ann McDonald could join us. Uh, you have heard Anne read from the very first weeks of Cultivating Voices live poetry, as well as she participated in a new book showcase. And it's just always, always a pleasure when, um, when I get to see Anne and I cannot wait to meet Anne in person. I just, you know, really all of you, I can't wait to meet in person. I've met some of you in person, of course, but um, oh, I, I look forward to that day. Well, a little more formally about Anne. Anne MacDonald is an Irish poet who believes that poetry can break down barriers and help us share and understand each other's experiences of walking in this world. Her first collection, Crow's Books, which we heard in the new book showcase here, and, and we were hearing from those poems when she first appeared here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry, was published in 2021 and includes the award-winning poem, Whose Coat? I'm sure that if you've been watching, you remember hearing the poem. I'll ne I've never forgotten the poem. I love this poem so much. Her second collection, Clothes Peg in My Pocket will be published in June 
of 2023. How exciting, something to look forward to in the warmer weather, Anne. Welcome and uh, happy holidays. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sandy. It's hard to believe here we are three years on and I have great memories of you standing in, I think a field uh, in the wind, reading out the notices in the early days. And um, who would have thought that here we'd be a kind of a global phenomenon set up by yourself and Elizabeth Ann and Don and Carol. And I'm so touched that you invited me to come tonight. I really, really am. Um, it's such an honor. And I've taken a little bit of liberty with the brief because most of my poetry is written about women of a certain age, um, making peace with themselves or the world they find themselves in. And I'm just going to do two poems tonight and they'll both be in my, my new collection. And the first one is inspired by a neighbour of mine who was a Jehovah's Witness and she was the most hilarious woman I had ever met. Um, constantly trying to convert me, but we laughed so much and drank an awful lot of red wine for the three years that I lived beside her. But this poem is dedicated to Maggie and it's called Kingdom Hall Calling. In December, in her 50th year, Mary made a decision to become a Jehovah's Witness for the coming festive season. She kept her grocery shop within reason and waved at neighbours who stopped to read the card tacked to the front door, heralding the cancellation of Mary's Christmas. This year, there would be no tinsel tat, no tree to shed its spines across the carpet, clogging up the hoover, no cards from people never seen, not being a consumer of stuff she didn't want and Definitely no chocolate roses in a tin. They be in a million sins at fat clubs. Her house and mind would instead, she thought, focus on quality time without the sugar. Therefore, there would be no socks, jocks, bath sets, nest of easy peelers, no sprouts from Brussels slopped onto gravy on a plate. And at the front gate, a sign addressed the postman directly saying, no cards here, but all junk mail and bills welcome. It was a witness at Mary's fat club that sparked the idea, not the finding of Jehovah so much as the shedding of the stress, the spending, the never ending putting up and taking down of plastic angels, tinfoil baubles, or balding birds with claws of wire bent with arthritic years of gripping the aforementioned tree. Listen to me, Maggie had said. Are you mad, Mary? We don't do Christmas. The lights went on in Mary's head. She said, do you know what, Maggie? This year I won't either. So neither women wasted hours wrapping crap for people who didn't want to try and not to cry when adding up the bill. This year, Maggie, she said, I swear I will spend the day in silence or in nature or learning to play the ukulele by tutorial on YouTube. Maggie handed her a copy of The Watchtower. Bolognese will do for dinner. Garlic bread's a surefire winner, being a family tradition in our house for the curing of hangovers. No bobbled festive wool pullovers with scalded Mary's underarms doing nothing for her figure. And truth be told, she knew every year she needed a size bigger. Why did she not think of this before? Maggie pushed some leaflets to the letterbox of the front door. So for the festive season, Mary signed her name as Rachel, <laughs> kept her money in a tin and rang the new year in from the comfort of her home, being perfectly happy alone and smiling as the first baby born in Ireland made the paper's front page. A little girl, screaming with incandescent rage at the state of the world she'd arrived in and the job she had ahead of her. Exhausted mammy smiling for the camera. They called the baby Saoirse, the Irish word for freedom. And I'm just going to read one short poem for you uh, now based on every phone call I've ever gotten and I'm sure a lot of the women among us, I hate to be sexist but I think they might identify with these kind of phone calls or maybe not and um, this is called 
dear Billy. Hello, Billy. Hello. What do you want? I can hardly hear the phone. I've just sat down. Are you finished work? Are you coming home? Hi, Marge, if you're putting a wash in, I'm not. Yeah, but if you are putting one on later on tonight, Billy, I've just poured myself a fucking vodka and white. And how come every single time you ring, you ask me to do something? Marge, can you not put me jeans in the machine? There's a lot of ticket in the pocket. Dear Billy, I hope you are well. It's very hot here. The beach is lovely. Sorry, Marge. Thank you very much and have a happy, happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas and a peaceful new year. And thank you again. That's Ann McDonald's folks. Thank you, Ann. Again, uh, so grateful for your participation and your just steadfast devotion to cultivating voices, live poetry, and you know, uh, and like so many of the the so many of the poets that join us from Ireland here on the program, like. And real, of course, from everywhere all over the world. But when we first started, because I published with Salmon Poetry, that was the poets were mostly on my Facebook page. And I had had such an I had had a combination of American poets and Irish poets. And um I'm 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 just so grateful for the 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 way that we've been able to cultivate and 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 be in community with each other across the pond over over these past three years and um, and while I have a moment I want to before we do our next giveaway our next gift um, I want to give a shout out to one particular reading series that has kind of been has been going along with us and in fact really inspired cultivating voices live poetry I, I i watched it from the beginning and that's lime square poets and i i, I see that i believe that dorsey fur is in the house tonight so again thank you so much to all that uh, dora and lauren do over in limerick and cork and uh, to all of my friends over across the pond. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight and for being here on the Sundays that you join us. Well, Kim, shall we Shall we give another gift? Yes, and we need Anne again. Anne, uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, like so uh, what's happening, you guys, is I'm randomly using different strategies with the number they give me to choose random winners from everyone here in the Zoom. A little later on, I'm going to check and see what's happening on the Facebook page, and maybe we can pick out a winner from there as well. So give me your any number, a lucky number between one and 10, Anne. Uh, number three, Kim. Number three. And that, my friends, is Lenora Good. Lenora, you are the winner of a subscription from Sandy to Cirque. Sandy, you want to tell them a little bit about Sir? Congratulations, Lenore, and thank you, Ann. Cirque Magazine, a literary journal for the North Pacific Rim. And the editor, Sandra Clevin, who's in the house tonight, who's in the house tonight today, one of the editors. It's such a beautiful journal of not only poetry, but incredible, incredible artwork. And I, I wish I could have time to, 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 um, to just show you everything in here. They're gorgeous. The format is a large format. You're gonna love receiving this journal. Um, it's such a special contribution to poetry. Uh, and it's, I'm, so grateful that I learned about it from one of my friends, Anya Kirschbaum, who had published in it. And then um, I started paying attention to it. And then I've then I became friends with with Sandy through through her poetry parlay series. And of course, you've heard um, 
folks from Cirque read here many, many times. Thomas A. Thomas published there, and many of you in the room, I'm sure. Uh, it's it's an astounding, astounding um, contribution to literary community. Enjoy it, Lenora, and folks. You know, support support our editors um, during the year, and support our member editors in particular. Cirque. All right, everybody. Thanks again, Anne. Lucky number three. Wow, beautiful. All right, folks. We again, we have. I must keep the program moving and moving along. And oh, it's so great when I get to hear a voice I haven't heard for a while, and I'm thrilled, thrilled to hear a poem from Rosalind Callahan. Welcome. Oh, lovely, Sandy. It's absolutely fantastic to be here. Um, I'm from Derry in the north of Ireland and tuning in from County Monaghan. Um, I've also taken some liberty with the brief. I know that many of you love me anyway, but I don't have one single cheerful poem. But this one does have the theme of stars and does have the theme of our common humanity. It's called Litany of Dead Stars. Hold on, don't sleep, hold tight, my son, as we race to the place where you were born. Don't provide GPS coordinates of medical facilities to the United Nations for its no strike list. The enemy will use it as a target menu. Syrian white helmets to Ukraine. Geneva Convention 1, 1864, the bedrock of international humanitarian law, was a milestone in the evolution of our universal conscience. Subsequent conventions and protocols track the corresponding evolution of warfare and update the rules accordingly to stem its atrocity, to curb its barbarity. The rules of war are clear. The rules of war are under attack. Civilian hospitals may in no circumstances be the object of military attack. Kunduz Trauma Center, airstrike by US AC 130U gunship. Al Iklas Children's Hospital, airstrike by the Saudi led coalition. Al Secure Trauma Center, airstrike by the Syrian-Russian coalition. Aldura Children's Hospital, airstrike by Israel. Mariupol Maternity Hospital number no. three, airstrike by Russia. The litany of dead stars is long, and so it goes on and on. The worst weapon of all, a world's silence, or the ratified state's soporific sentiments of serious violations of humanitarian law, or the United Nations Council's failure of robust, sustained scrutiny. Targeting hospitals is a war crime under the International Criminal Court statutes. We can sleep easy in our beds with its one successful prosecution. For all its guff, the World Health Organization is a study in timidity. In the face of horror, we must discover how radically compassionate we actually are. Denounce every illegal act, whether by nations we regard as hostile or not. Whose eyes shall see the last hospital in the world if Geneva is left to drown in the Rubicon? There's only space in this place where you will die, my son, and our hospitals rubble, bloodied, blown out, bombed. Thank you. Another powerful poem, necessary. You know, uh, I never want anyone to apologize for what they, what they feel, share, like, so, you know, that poem is a poem of let's speak the truth and let's be heard and make sure the messages get through 
as well as heard and acted upon. That's another aspect of what poetry is absolutely for. Thank you so much for that poem that does the promote poetry of peace in the face of war, as well as where we head when we consider what it means for our shared humanity. So Rosalind Callahan, I'm so grateful for you being in the program today. And I look forward to hearing your voice again with us in 2023. Thank you so much and happy holidays to you, my dear friend. Well, next, I'm moving us along as best I can, everybody. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm filled with the spirit today. And uh, I can say our winner today, Patricia Kerrigan is next. <laughs> as well as another, another, another amazing literary citizen with the Brownstone Poets. Fabulous. Thank you. I'm so great. I'm so grateful to know you and so glad you're here today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try and manage to speak. I had a coughing fit earlier. This is for the season. <coughs> it's a haiku sequence. <coughs> uh, can I share the screen? Are you able to do that? I I'm going to try and read it the best way I can. My voice. It's very funny. On Christmas, Kitty Coo. Kitty's reflections. The Grim Reaper sights more ornaments. Kitty on treetop. The angel of death surveys damage below. Body parts of balls scatter across living room. Kitty blames dog. Demolition Kitty. Bulldoze, bulldozes Christmas tree. Tim Burr. Sorry, I just lost my voice completely again. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Let's hear it for the cats. <laughs> Let's hear it for the cats. That's Patricia Carrick. Thank you so much. I wish I could give you a Manuka honey drop for your, for your throat some tea perhaps anyway happy holidays my friend thank you again for everything and i look forward to hearing more of your work you know patricia also read in our new book showcase uh, from a hybrid from a hybrid work um a, a novel poetry and uh again uh and is often a very very animated member in our open mics. So great to have you here. Well, next we go to two winners back to back, Lenora Good. Hi, Sandy. Hi. I am so, I'm so jazzed. I love Cirque. And though I'm not on the North Pacific Rim, I am in Washington State in the desert side, the town of Kennewick. I have one Christmas poem. I wrote it a bazillion years ago, and it was for my then most favorite poet, The Gift for Paul Monette. Mm. The star so bright, the night became almost day. Figures of shadow gray showed true colors as they made their way from fields and towns and cities to lay their prized possessions in homage to the king asleep on the sweet asleep on the sweet straw of an old feed trough in a rough and humble cave some brought spices some brought gold some brought jewels some brought song all brought a valued gift to lay before the babe only to discover when they left their gifts had been returned tenfold and more the gift of love Thank you. Oh, 
The gift of love indeed here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. That's Lenora Good. You know, I'm thinking that we began the month of December with our poets focus on the theme or the word stars. And, 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 and really, I absolutely feel the extension of that reading, have felt it throughout the entire month of December and, and featuring prominently today. It's almost like stars part two. Uh, well, beautiful poem. If you're not familiar with Paul Lynette's work, um, poetry and also um, such, a, such a moving memoir called Becoming a Man. Um, I love his work. Thanks for, thanks for bringing Paul's voice into our consciousness today, Lenora. Well, we move next to another of my dear special guests today, but honestly, everybody, thank you, each and every one of you. Um, you're all so special. Um, oh, that's what a what a beautiful what a beautiful tribute to poetry and and our and our love of poetry today. Uh, my next guest, you heard Elaine just uh, also a few weeks ago in, in a, an incredible, incredible reading in our new books showcase. And oh, I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait a long time to hear you again. So we brought you right back. We brought you right back. And I'm so grateful. Happy holidays to you. And, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Let me tell you all a little bit more about Elaine. And um, again, folks, those new book showcases are devotedly curated, posted by Don Krieger every Sunday that we have a program for your viewing pleasure. I go back to them often. And if you've not caught the if you've not caught the readings where our guests are have read, you can go back and see them, and I highly recommend them. Well, Elaine Dahl is one of those poets that I that I am grateful to have had on the New Book Showcase and be a part of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry for a time. And uh, here's a little more. Elaine is a Pushcart Prize and Best of the Net nominee and is the author of two poetry chapbooks. We adore, adore, adore and promote chapbooks here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Her two chapbooks are When and Sweat, Dance, Sing, Cut, both published by Finishing Line Press. And I've met so many poets for Finishing Line Press. Um, that we've had here on the program as well. And uh, shout out to that press for the voices that they bring to poetry. Well, Elaine's fiction and poetry have appeared widely in journals and anthologies. And I'm so grateful to have your voice back on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry today. Welcome and happy holidays to you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, everyone. Happy holidays. Uh, my first poem is about music. Music brings me peace. Uh, so this is called To the Saxophone Abuela Brought for My Aunt, who later passed it on to my mother, who handed it to me. If I knew how to write a note, I would write one to the saxophone I used to play in my youth. I would write it in pen and include the smudges and crossed out words. I would write it near a window at five o'clock in the morning, the same time Abuela would wake up to say her prayers. I would establish a pattern, a rhythm, and perhaps begin it with a statement identifying myself. Not a question like, do you remember me from high school? But something much more profound. I would express my gratitude for jazz and swing, improvisation and freedom, risk and candor, passion and heart. I would confess how its tone, color, and language have taken my breath away and illuminated my path. 
My beloved instrument is worthy of an ode, both flowery and rugged. And if I could, I would write one with conviction and remorse. I would offer an apology for my neglect. I wouldn't mention our disagreements or complain about its squeaking. I wouldn't try to explain that I let everything go because I was a little, a little bit lazy and felt inadequate. My heart has been offbeat. There are so many feelings I wish to release. I wish I could explain that I wasn't disenchanted by its old age or the dent in its spell. I didn't want to change it. I didn't want to repair it. For the dent was evidence of struggle and hard work. And Abuela knew it would mark us forever. Ave Maria, if I could only write an ode, I would remind my esteemed saxophone how it was chosen. How Abuela saved money from her three jobs to give us music so we could create our own. I would propose a new beginning. I would end it with what I've learned. Sacrifice and perseverance bear much fruit and deep rooted love guides you to grow. This next poem is called Music. It's a recent poem that I wrote and it's my love letter to music. I forgot I had known you. I didn't remember your ways, your body, how it moved like a snake sometimes or a dolphin, spontaneous and playful, leaping for air. And you are air. I had known you, the manner in which you move a heart dispirited by storms. You catch the storms and they become dissonant wonders. How did I manage to live like this, with the heaviness of things without your sky? I wasn't looking for you. Your embrace came unexpectedly on a cold day of thunder and lightning. You saw me off key with achy dry bones, sitting on my sofa with too many pillows. Your eyes finding beauty in a desert or pasture lit up the room. A song rose from slumber and I felt alive, a little less lonely. I will cherish you. I will take the debris, the roots, the particles, the pockets of joy, the butterfly and the cocoon from which it came. And I will turn it all into breath, into life, into you. Thank you so much. That's amazing poetry and music. The music of Elaine Nadal. I, I cherish your voice, truly. I cherish your voice. Thank you. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. Here she goes. Okay. She needs okay. to help us choose the next one. Absolutely. Here we go. <laughs> Another okay, gift Elaine, give me a stove. number between 11 and 20. Uh, 19. Okay. I'll be right back with that winner, Sandy. All righty. Well, folks, again, thank you for being with us here on our Holiday Poetry Open house. We're hearing the voices of folks from all across our time zones here today and spreading a little holiday cheer and, and also amplifying message of peace and harmony and our shared humanity. It's all here in this room, isn't it? When we gather every Sunday, we actually get to practice shared humanity here through our poetry here on cultivating voices live poetry <clears throat> and our next winner sandy is leslie trainer and leslie trainer you will receive another copy that we gave out earlier of this gorgeous magazine december a literary literary legacy since 1958 we'll be in touch after the program to get that in the mail to you across the pond. Thanks for coming out today. Congratulations, Leslie Trainer. Again, another another poet that we heard this year, um, many times in the open mic, and also in a very very moving and memorable new book showcase. Happy holidays to you, and I know you're going to enjoy that issue of December. Thank you, Kim. Well. Anybody here with us could be, everybody here is a special guest. 
and our next guest, our next guest in the open mic is one of my poets on the coast sisters. I love this woman so much. I'm so glad. And we began the we began the year with a new book showcase from Mary Ellen Talley. I'm thrilled to get to hear a poem from you today. It feels like the perfect book ends for me. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, I found I do have a poem about peace and it's about peace in family and politics. And it goes with the theme that uh, I think you said that Anne McDonald uh, can break, says poetry can break down barriers. Well, this poem hasn't been published, but it did break down some barriers um, family-wise and politically-wise. Um, Villanelle to de-escalate for my sister. Twelve years between us, always affection and grace. Last bird of our flock of four, I started out apart, yet not adrift. Though early on, our family taught what dissonance can erase. Your ruffled plumage, that glamorous smile upon your face. My 15th birthday at your house gave my confidence a lift. 12 years between us, always harmony and grace. We roosted first in Spokane until you flew away. I eagerly babysat your skittering children any day, any shift. Warning. Our habitat taught that too much alcohol can erase. You and I fledged to our haven slowly, not in any race. Settled in your Arizona and Texas, my Seattle, and avoided any rift. Twelve years between us, I always felt your warmth and grace. As House Sparrow and Stellar's Jay, we shared embraced, celebrated your and my children, remembered birthdays with a gift, though heritage harbored what family tumult can erase. Stories told as our parents approached the pearly gates until that recent phone call veered us off opinion's cliff. 12 years between us, slam, damn, there goes grace. It's years of goodwill that family chaos can debase. Will conversation between us now seem ill at ease, makeshift? See what scolding Twitter or stiff silence can erase. Today's politics conflate fact and fear with such distaste that jarring verbal sparring makes talks destruction swift. 12 years between our blue and tawny, do we still have grace? Will family ties find harmony in what discord cannot erase? Thank you. Mary. Wow, Mary Ellen. That is Villanelle. That's what villanelles were made for. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays to you. And I, I, I appreciate I appreciate you so, so much. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm grateful for that poem. Mm -hmm. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Grateful for you. <laughs> Thank you. I hope to see you soon in person. <laughs> Okay, folks. I mean, this is this is just a reading of abundance. Like it's just voice after voice, poem after poem, and and I and I love hearing from each of you. And I'm so grateful that Joanne James is here with us today. Oh my gosh, we get to hear poem from Joanne, right? Tom is clapping. I know, right? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Hi, you got, got me to get my uh, leopard hat out. 
I am, um, I'm going to read a poem that when, after I finished it, I realized it was like, a, I was, um, my heart was answering me. So it, this is for all poets and um, it's called, I write the poem in my heart. There's one word here that's uh, called Ru Yi, R-U-Y-I. It's a Chinese, uh, used for Chinese art. And the word means as you wish. I wish I had sea green wings, ink stone pond, flying tiger spirals. I wish I drove a UPS truck. Avalokiteshvara, may we dwell in compassion. I wish the cicadas would reveal themselves. I wish my jade heart was exposed, red sun, mercy, to live another thousand years. I wish you were here. Scatter the ashes under the bonsai tree. I wish I was a mossy stone wall those raven dreams of extinction, a fish suddenly leaps. Nothing is difficult. I wish I was a loaf of wonder bread, love and spirit and fairy tales. I wish I was a bartender in a dive bar. There's no calendar in these mountains. In a thousand hills, birds have ceased to fly, thrumming. I wish to read Moby Dick all over again. Ru Yi, as you wish. Ru Yi, scepter, white, nephrite, orchid, chrysanthemum, croaking frog, croaking. Countless footsteps have disappeared. I wish I had a PhD in philosophy, rock, crystal, lion. Oh, I wish all the elderly had bouquets of flowers. I wish I knew Yiddish. Disappearance. I wish you'll always remember me. The shade of yellow also happens to be a rare hue. Shape that suggests a bird-like creature away from the familiar world. Fragile bones from owl pellets scattered on pathways. I wish I was a golden, mosaic, shining. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I write the poems in my heart uh, and I felt the poem in my heart. You wrote the poem in your heart. I felt the poem in my heart. That's Joanne James. Another thing I truly, truly appreciate when we gather is that ability for certain poems to, to um, hold a space as, as, as possible prompts of ways that we can write our own poem. You know, so, so, so take a page from Joanne and, and use that litany of I wish, I wish, I wish. And um, I think we, I think each of us could write a uniquely powerful work based on, on on when I write the poems in my heart. Joanne James, thank you so much. Happy holidays to you, my friend. I'm so glad you were here today. I love that poem. And if I could, I would grant you an honorary degree in philosophy today. <laughs> what a gift. What a gift. Well, our next poet again oh, I, I love these folks coming out from everywhere to join us you've heard david bridges read with us a number of times also we had a beautiful new book showcase back in back in time with david as well and i, I love i love it when we get to hear david's voice so thank you and happy holidays to you <laughs> thank you um I'll grant uh, Joanne uh, an honorary degree in uh, Poetics of the Heart. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, thank you, Sandy. And uh, thank you all the readers uh, who have read and who will be reading uh, today. Um, I'm David. I'm coming from uh, Cobalt, Ontario, Canada. Um, 
my my mom died in uh, 2007 and uh she very much loved uh, christmas and so it's been kind of lonely since she uh, she has passed away my father has passed away too and um a couple of years ago christmas time i was uh, i i just looked above the uh, the kitchen stove on the shelf and i saw something that uh, reminded me of her uh, passion <laughs> The Vintage Cookie Can. After grandma's passing, her daughter on the next street inherited her traditional cookie can. Since mom's death, the red-lidded round can with oriental font orange letters spelling cookies rests atop empty our pine kitchen cupboards. Masterful hands once crafted dozens of peanut butter, gingerbread, chocolate chip in a venerated kitchen of spicy delights. Coming home hungry after school, if time bright, we'd be granted one soft treat from her baking sheet. Letting goody gifts harden, a layer of wax paper covered its bottom before they're safely stashed away. Christmas is near, but no turquoise sprinkle shortbreads warm the old cookie can, dearly missing its matriarch. Grateful family ghosts inhabit this museum of sweet crumbs, exhibiting a household treasure. A canister of love from a heart whose oven was always on. That's a beautiful, beautiful poem. Oh, I love that poem. I actually have the cookie jar here. That was our childhood cookie jar here in my kitchen. And I will always now, every time I look at that cookie jar, think of your poem and think of your mother. That's what poetry does, right? Is connects us through our spirit to others that have passed and will join us in the future. It has that ability to span space and time and memory. I love that poem. Thank you so much, David. I'm sending you just the warmth of the season over, over the miles to you. Well, next, I get, I get choked up now. I mean, that poem, beautiful, but when now I think of who's reading next, my next, our next special guest. Josephine Loray has been with us, like Anne McDonald, right from the beginning, right from the beginnings of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. And I still, still remember the first time you came on the program, you and we laugh about it, not because of the poetry. The poetry has always been stunning, astounding, mesmerizing, unforgettable. But because you were having some issues as so many people did, um, but like you were upside down and turned around. And yeah, 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 it was like, well, everyone, you have, your world has been changed by hearing the poetry of Josephine Loray, as certainly mine has over these three years. And I'm not only grateful to have you as a guest, but I'm like as a friend, like just a, just a friend who is in my heart always, always. And I, 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 I wish I lived next door to you. Like I just wish 
like I was in Calgary. I have thought about moving to Calgary just so like I could be hanging out with you all the time. So a little bit more on this beloved, per about this beloved person formally, poetically. Um, you know, I can gush on about everybody for, for hours, as you know, so, but it's very genuine. So here's the formal bio though. Josephine Loray is a poet in this diamond world. She has read on stage and in global Zoom rooms, whoever would have imagined we'd be putting that in our bios. Uh, and yet that's what we're doing. And her poems have been put to music, danced, integrated into visual arts and published in anthologies and collections on four continents, 14 countries, and in four different languages. Josephine has two collections, Unity and the Calgary Herald bestseller, the Cowichan series. Of course, as with Josephine and, and all our poets, check out their websites, certainly purchase their collections. Uh, my heart overfloweth for you, my friend, today. Thank you for being here. I, I really mean it. I mean, I really mean it for everybody, but I, I'm just, yeah, stop because I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. I would have been here regardless uh, of the invitation, but thank you so much. And I feel like this is a, a way for us to get together right before the holidays and celebrate with the poetry family. So I'm really, really honored to do that. Um, I created a piece for today. And that's the last one that I'm going to read. But I do have a small suite of poems. I'm going to start with Ink and the Moon. Oh, I, and I usually say, I'm living in Calgary, which are the ancestral and traditional lands of a number of Indigenous peoples, and I would like to acknowledge them and thank them for bringing culture and poetry to the land, the Pekani, Siksika, Kainai, Nakoda, and Tsitsina. And for those of you who are not sure where Calgary is, we're just above Montana. My first piece is called Ink and the Moon. Cradled on canvas, ink stains fingertips, deep as night while the moon spreads her splendor, softening the path of stars. The second um, that I would like to read is about a personal kind of piece. Uh, my father passed away this summer and it's a visual poem as well. So that's what it looks like on paper. And it's called Liminalities. My sister held your hand as you drew your last and told me your touch faded finger by finger until only in her pinky and then gone. But Papa, I feel you differently in dawn air drawn into lungs, newborn sky. Striscia di bianco in un cielo azzurro, wisps of white in an azure sky. A flurry of sparrows rising up into beech tree and echoing your whistle, il frischetto del cardinale, the whistle of the cardinal. And just a little um, a footnote to that one. Um, I don't know if it's just an Italian tradition, but my dad had a whistle. So if we're ever in a crowd of people and we kind of were separated from our parents, we'd always know where our dad was. And when I was in Toronto, uh, where my parents lived, just um, coming up to my father's passing and after my father's passing, I would hear the cardinal and we don't hear them in Calgary. So I think he's my, my dad's spirit animal. Uh, a few more that I'm going to read with you. Uh, dreamscape. Blue horses hiss in fields of high grass as feathered fish fly across a starbound sky. Tiger and jackrabbit waltz under a sliver of moon as constellations give chase in a wild willow wind. This same wind calling my name through time, echoing my mother's name, my grandmother's, her grandmother's, this wild willow wind 
calling us each to this place. Um, the poems that I have in the collection called The Cowichan, don't know if you can see that, The Cowichan series. The Cowichan is an area on Vancouver Island and it's, it's an anglicized form of the name of the people that lived there, the indigenous peoples. So this one is called Cowichan Valley. Clouds carried in by a wind whose song is born of lodgepole pine, sitka spruce, hemlock. Born of a whisper, passed from stand to stand until the trees all join in melody, adding their voices to the harmony, ferns and moss a contrabasso to the song, a symphony carried by wind. Clouds thick as down tuck up to the chin of these wooded slopes, whispering a forgotten lullaby. Close your eyes, O valley of the Cowichan, the Mesachi, and receive the blessing of rain. The next piece again is a nature-based poem. I guess that's where I get my sense of serenity. Dragonfly, field flower blue, Forget-me-not sprouted in a sway of grass, a seed hither blown. Dragonfly skims the surface of the pond I once lived. How magnificent the mating of electric blue. Two bodies, four wings hovering, the stillness of water. The next piece was inspired by uh, Pablo Neruda, who wrote, and my apologies for my uh, pronunciation, Escondeme en, tu, en tus brazos por esta noche sola. Hide me in your arms just for this night. Hide me in your arms from the clawing hands of time. Still the pendulum. Let the world spinning stop. Your heartbeat keeping rhythm to our love. Eyes convey words that no human ear can hear. Fingertips trace unspoken promise unto flesh. The sun goes down and rises up again as we glide our way back to the ticking talk of time. I'm gonna jump to the last one now. Um, and that's the one that I wrote for, for this occasion. Winter Serenade. A hush falls like snow from this midwinter sky sound half absorbed by gray light. Warm yellow glow, the windows of home, illuminates longest of nights. The suspended stumble of stars, an answer to unuttered prayers. Answers, solace, solicitude, the suspended silence of stars. The blue bashful woo of a low hanging moon, the slow yelling, yellow glowing of home. Shadows absorbed in the mauve tinted light as a hush falls like snow. Oh, this midwinter night. Thank you so much and happy holidays to everybody. That poetry, the, the, the lyrics, the, the lyrical beauty. Poetry of Josephine Lawrence. I, you know, we get to hear voice after voice after voice here on Cultivating Voices. And I can't imagine kind of now my life without these voices that I've been able to hear that I, that I, I, I would never, I would never have probably met Josephine, but for these strange little squares on Facebook. And I am so, so grateful for these connections and these poems that's, and, and I believe like me, you all come to this group for the sustenance that it can bring in joyous, but also difficult and challenging and dare I say us sharing our grief with each other in ways so I just thank you for your heart 
and your poetry. And I send you so much love over these holidays and give your mom a hug from me. And Thank help you, us Isabel. choose help us choose the next prize winner, Jill. Yes, I know. It's a okay. tie. We've okay. got it. I, I need a number between eleven and twenty, Josephine. Seventeen. All right. Um, Thanks, Kim. Says mm -hmm. with lots of confidence, 17. <laughs> Folks, you know that I have a penchant for the epic reading, but you know, we and I usually we usually now do about a 90-minute program, and we're going a little over, but it's because mm. it's our holiday. Yes, and we have so. a winner here. We have Mary Louise Kiernan as our next winner, and she will receive from our wonderful member, generous and kind and fabulous, the fixed and free quarterly. Thank you, Billy Brown, for giving the next year's subscription, right? That's or is so it 2022 subscription? For we're gonna send that out to you, Mary Louise. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Woo! Congratulations, Mary Louise Kiernan, and thank you so much, Billy Brown. <laughs> One of those hearts, those hearts from Albuquerque. Oh, uh, we've got some, we've got our, we've got some New Mexican folks here in the room today. I saw John and I saw Bill Nevins earlier and um, John Roach and from, from um, Jules Poetry Playhouse and uh, we love our connection with uh, poets in New Mexico. You've all been a tremendous, tremendous contribution to poetry throughout the pandemic. Um, Billy and John and just, and I was telling Kim earlier, just a little shout out to Billy Brown that Billy, you almost got me to sing a song today. I'm not going to do it, but I thought about it because how you come on and sing songs from time to time. So again, thank you, Billy Brown, for that, the subscription that'll be going out. Mary Louise Kiernan, again, another one of our members who gave it a tremendous, tremendous reading in our new book showcase just the past just past month. So, so glad we're able to share the poetry with each other. Well, let's move along again. Uh, you know, I like, I, I know I sound like a broken record here on the holiday poetry open house, our ho po -o reading. Um, but, you know, we get to see performances and hear poetry in a variety of formats. And honestly, there. There is, there is nothing more stunning and beautiful. It's unique what Alexandra Zarapalu brings, Zarapalus brings to us here at Cultivating Voices. And so I'm so glad that we'll hear a poem from you today, Alexandra. Thank you. And thank all you. my best to you during the holidays. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you. Um, can you see the graphics going by? Okay. It's, they're looking great. Okay, just making sure. They're Flying stunning. 13. Always. My trembling personality, my galloping personality. Let my flaws in, let my virtues in. Battling, balancing between earthly and ideal behavior. Riding with warrior duties, flying with festive ceremonies. Ancestors and descendants, transforming protogenic instinct and barbarity into cultured, refined nobleness. All personalities becoming one. Following the smoke of Ithaca, wayfaring my own boat. Ruins behind, dreams ahead. Expectations blending with sirens' as songs. Punishments and rewards, repenting and enriching our voyage. Crusading, descending and descending, scarring and rejuvenating. My trembling mind, my galloping mind, 
let my fears in, let my visions in, battling, balancing between earthly and ideal reality, riding past fallen Troy, flying towards sacred temples, poetry and prophecies, transforming missions and experiences into immortal knowledge and treasures, all minds becoming one, unadorned words enchanting the fiery dragon of the golden fleece, angels and dart all ablaze, burning down all moulds, Prometheus gifting profound new templates and ideologies, lighting up matter and spirit, earth and sky, my trembling heart, my galloping heart, let my sorrows in, let my raptures in, battling, balancing between earthly and ideal love, riding through tempestuous waves, flying through moonlit water lilies, silver cocoons transforming hurt and trauma into soft silken chrysalids, all hearts becoming one, hovering above earth's wounds, embracing the altar of healing, mystical muses weaving threads of sweetness, of solace, resilient yarns guiding us through labyrinths of personal growth, initiating, elevating each journey of each relationship. My trembling soul, my galloping soul, let my sins in, let my blessings in, battling, balancing between earthly and ideal liberation, riding into dichotomized horizons, flying into cosmic rays, eternal divine laws transforming dark ancient forces into golden propulsion and pulsation, all souls becoming one, lighting up my own path, a path unique to me, purgatory sun holding turmoiled memories, inflexible desires, escaped hopes, rising and setting in the azure of the sea, in the azure of the spirit, surging into eternity with full sails, all my efforts maturing, our trembling civilizations, our galloping civilizations, let our tribulations in, let our exaltations in, battling, balancing between earthly and ideal humanity. Thank you and Happy New Year to everyone. Alexandra Zarapoulos from the Flying Series. Let our tribulations in, let our exultations in. Love the flying series. Thank you for, it, it is such a perfect, perfect sharing for this occasion, a, a, a reminder for us all in this season as we move forward into the new year with new promise of ourselves and how we can connect with each other. Beautiful. I so look forward every time and we've been we've been so blessed to be able to hear your poetry throughout this year. Thank you and all my best to you during the holidays. Well, again, it's a, this is an abundance of, of riches today and all the various ways we get to experience poetry. Um, I'm so grateful for our next member as well, whom we've gotten to hear in the open mic during this year. Uh, big, big, big shout out to you, my friend, Cynthia Steele. Happy holidays. Thank you, Sandy. Happy holidays to you from Alaska, from Cirque Journal, from Sandra and myself. Um, so I'm just going to read, yes, Cirque Journal, awesome. And somebody was saying they wanted to submit 
So send us an email and um, we'll talk about whether you can qualify for, for submitting because there are many states involved. It's not just Washington and Oregon. Sandy will talk more about that. All right, so this is Christmas circa 1976. At nine, my sister and I dragged that tree. The bulk of it spread apart. We kept turning it. So it got damaged evenly all the way around. The length of it much longer than us, though not anywhere near six feet, it's dead weight dragging thick furrows in the road, the sound of it trailing behind us, scraping muffled tones along the snowy trail. With daddy, there was eggnog, with Everclear at Aunt Dina's. I looked up five and six and said, milk, please. She laughed, threw her head back, her face full of freckles, her arms full of freckles, her green eyes sparkling. That's right, she said. You like milk. I didn't, but the fiery sensation of the hot lava spilling down my gut didn't set right, not yet. The grown-ups laughed more than usual, laughing until they fell down sometimes, laughing until they weren't anymore, until it was quiet. With mama, there were phone calls with familiar voices, but unfamiliar faces thousands of miles away asking how my entire year was in one conversation. I wondered at age six, seven, eight, nine, how to answer that question. How was my entire year? It was okay, I guess. School, walking home, going to the movies, dogs having puppies, parents toking up. What to say? Mostly I listened to elderly voices, talk of snow in faraway places. Powders with fragrances and huge puffs with elastic bands to grab onto. Caché by Prince Machabelli. In a 1970s introductory ad, the fragrance is in, as individual as you are. Fascinating caché reacts to your body's chemistry. Besides being fresh and exciting, caché is designed to pick up and play on every girl's very own special chemistry. In a sultry, woody floral heart resting on a warm leathery mossy base. I would dab it on my wrist. The little suitcases came, pastel blue, pastel pink with particularly broken bottles. Smashed some fancy ceramic plastic containers whose tops screwed off, we dug into them and smeared them wherever it seemed appropriate. My mother's face peering into our shared room with that expression that seemed to be her own recollections. You know, the memories that some of, that, that some of you were able to evoke through these poems that you're bringing to our holiday poetry open house, uh, I, I appreciate folks bringing your families and, 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 and your memories of this particular season into the room, uh, the, the intimacy of that uh, at this time of year. That's Cynthia Steele, beautiful. Thank you so much. And one of, one of my absolute joys of, of this year was able to meet Cynthia in person, along with, of course, Sandy Clemens sitting right beside. And I love when Alaska joins us because you don't always, you don't bring one, but you usually bring two or three people with you. <laughs> Double <laughs> and triple the pleasure. The amazing Sandy Clevin, thank you for being here today and all the times you've been with us through during the year. Happy holidays to you. So I'm up next, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Care, take it away, okay. Um, thanks for all this uh, attention to Cirque. Um, uh, great pleasure in, in uh, seeing you hold the um, issue up. We're very close. We will have a new issue in December. 
This is December, so you know how close that is. <laughs> you can contribute if you are in Idaho, Montana, of course, Eastern Washington, uh, uh, British Columbia, Oregon, Hawaii. Our Pacific Rim is a very large, broad rim. It's a very broad rim. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thank you. That was really, really wonderful listening to everyone throughout the world here today. It's very nice, too. I'm going to read something by Karen Shannon. Um, Karen's work led to the first poetry book created by Cirque Press. It was because after listening to her, I said, do you have any more of that? <laughs> and she did. And we put together her book, Apportioning the Light. Because of her, we birthed the press. And we have, we're pushing 40 volumes of various kinds of writing, much of it poetry. I'm going to jump right into reading this because I know we're on a time constraint and I'm going to, but I'm going to read it slow and carefully. This is a Christmas letter as poetry and she really did send it out as a Christmas letter. Dear friends, this oddly snowless December, all your holiday letters arrive with the good news. A child is born, a mountain climbed, the brides given, honeymoons in Seattle and Istanbul. From Switzerland, word comes of a new house and from California, a surgery survived in good form, a marriage that didn't, but seems best for all a veritable litany of this year's grace. How well we know it is the season for joy. In the story, bright multitudes full, fill the sky and even the despairing wingless angels sing rejoice, rejoice, listen. You can hear them as the year hurls past. I want to tell you everything. Sing it up country with a cold sky darkening. I would shout it across the wide plains, flat borders, where one summer night we stood ankle deep in stars, con condoning our lives, and never once say how hard it is to call back that brightness. We don't write of war, or of the vacant stare of hunger, or of boats lost at sea, the death of sons, or of anything to do with borders on the other side of the world. Look, we say without irony, look at this month of bargains. You don't tell me your grief, I won't tell you mine. And we are left listening to the silences between words and wishing hard for those we love all that is bright and joyful in this holiday season and in the new years to come. Wishing this and more for you, Karen. A Perfect Contribution from Sandy Clevin, editor of Circ Journal. I can, we're so happy to have you as a member of our community yeah. with the extraordinary work that you do and, and the poets that you also bring to us through the work of Circ Press. And um, wow, what a poem. Well, I am so happy to have my dear friend and Olympia Poetry Network compatriot, Thomas A. Thomas joining us today on the program. Uh, I can remember the first time I saw Thomas Reed in the open mic at Traditions, which is now called New Traditions here in Olympia, Washington. Again, a person that we've benefited from hearing your poetry over these past three years. And, and I'm just so grateful to just have you as my friend and to have you here today reading with us a little bit more in the bio, the more formal bio about Thomas for all of you. Thomas A. Thomas.
joined Cultivating Voices before Zoom was a household word. <laughs> His poems and photographs appear online and in print at the one, the only, Cirque Journal, <laughs> Gyroscope Review, Blue Heron Review, Vox Populi, Sphere, the Banyan Review.org, and FemAsia Magazine.com. Thomas was nominated for both the Best of the Net and the Pushcart Prize in 2022. And of course, as with all our poets here, check them, check out their websites for more information. It is the unesteemable pleasure of mine to welcome you, Thomas A. Thomas to the program today. Happy holidays. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Thank you, Kim and Don also. Um, hey, and thank you, Carol. And um, also, Cynthia, I've, I've brought a uh, very Ferlinghetti Christmas wish. It was a, a plea for peace in 1971. <clears throat> Christmas present, 1971. I have heard it said that Santa Claus died in an air conditioning duct just south of Lompoc, California. They tell me that temporary ceasefires are at present being negotiated in Cambodia and Pakistan, in Egypt and in Ireland, in Uganda, and in Chicago for Christmas, but it's not likely, ho, ho, ho. They tell me also that the people in the slums will have at least one solid meal this year, or that the children will have toys or third-hand clothes, and I have it from reliable sources that this year's trees of aluminum and plastic are more natural than ever and even smell like pine. Somewhere I have heard that for once we should try to love one another and that GE light sets for outdoors are only a dollar sixty-seven. They tell me to forget that next week they all go back to the tall and windowed crypts to shuffle papers in their sleep. And many will starve to death on Christmas Eve and many die from bullets. You ask me if it isn't worth it to be human for a while. I think yes. But I am tired of this year's lower than ever specials and of great new gift ideas and of ideal Xmas gifts for anyone and everyone. Tired of 497 limited time only record album sets that capture all the joys of Christmas and of watching men carve the flesh from each other, strangers cheating strangers. And most of all, I am tired of wars where nobody is wrong, and I am waiting for the everlasting light to shine and for the peacemakers to be called the children of God or of Buddha or of the sun. So that's a that's a world peace political sort of peace that I was <laughs> wanting to speak of and beg for. Then there's also personal peace. And uh, this one's called Instead of God. Instead of God, say Heron, say Kingfisher, say that was the 10th summer my wife was dying and I was not. Instead of God, say a name like Anne or Grace or Joy. Say the one who broke me open in a new way this holy, unexpected time. 
instead of God say love let joy in the side door and she sits in the kitchen now in the warmth of fresh bread and cinnamon and honey instead of God say only desire want say pomegranate poplar tree say stay say please say thank you say love again dark and light and forever and one more if if time allows uh, this is more the piece of wild things that time by the river was about the stars too it was summer, early, or perhaps spring, late, all time and no time, hours or an eternity, time like torrents of snow melt, roaring and whispering both, the water carrying starlight down from the high peaks, time slow like blossoms opening in their time, wild rose, daisy, lupin, paintbrush. Our time was not carnal, was incarnate. Our intimacy like the spotted sandpipers tender probing among shining rocks at the river's edge for nymphs and larvae, sustenance plucked from cold, clear joy. Our kindnesses showed a higher love as the blue heron paused on a dead branch of a snowing cottonwood tree, as our bodies rested on the bank below, as cedar wax wings danced from snag to sky, caught sparkling insects in the silent air's sunlight above the singing rush of water that spilled toward its calmer home and a fritillary, a lit, sunlit, a light, and spinning its dance on the yellow heart of a daisy for us. Or not for us, just there, red, gold, orange, and silver afire, as wings opened and closed, not in sorrow nor joy, not in acceptance or forgiveness or surrender or anything that calls for earthly tears, just there before us, below the peaks so high above, above the river sparkling past, day into night, as wind stirred the trees above it, lifted our eyes above our eyes, to the currents that move the stars. Oh. oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, folks, you are listening. You have just heard the poetry of Thomas A. Thomas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish I could just come right over and give you a hug right now. <laughs> oh, I love those, I love those poems so much. Well, we have another, uh, we have another gift as, as if, as if they're not all the gifts, as, as if we haven't yeah. been giving gifts all afternoon through all these amazing poems, Kim. It's true. Right. So Thomas, we need for you to give us a number between one and 10 for our final gift, which is directly from Sandy herself. She is gifting a subscription to Poetry Ireland Review, everyone. How awesome is that? So Thomas, a number between one and 10, please. One and 20? No, one in 10. <laughs> Such a responsibility. Uh, let's go with eight. Eight. Charlene Neely, you are our winner. You get a year <laughs> subscription to Poetry Ireland Review. Woohoo! 
Charlene, I hope you will enjoy every poem that you will read in Poetry Ireland Review. And oh, I will. The, the beauty of it is you will recognize the names of folks that you've heard here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Um, happy holidays, congratulations, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> of course. Well, folks, we have a few more poets and our last special guest for today. It's like so perfect, the, the, the way the, the reading has gone. It's been tremendous all day. And next we get to hear another of our friends from Canada, Max Vanderstein. I'm so happy to see you today. I know, look, people clapping. Of course, we love Max. Well, good to see you today too, Sandy, and everybody else that's joined us. Um, what a great afternoon here it's been so far. I'm coming to you from Edmonton in Canada, where today it is quite wintry, in fact, and um, getting us well in the mood for Christmas. I'd like to share a poem that I did have included in my second collection of poetry called Fair Play. It's called Harmony, and um, it expresses a wish that I really would like to see fulfilled at this time of year out. At, at any time, actually. Harmony. I make this motion with my pen, endeavoring to put an end to the silent charade, wanting to return not, my friend, to an emotional parade, but simply writing and strongly wishing only to recreate the wanting word that language has failed to communicate the naturally implanted seed of man's elemental need for harmony. The quests and questions, acceptance or exceptions that comprise and compromise also contradict our inner nature. The seeming simplicity taken for granted is yet so elusive. If communication is the stimulus for celebration between us, then let love convince the voice of the exclusive to be and be proof and poem of our harmony. If you could only reach me, if you could only teach me to hear you openly, to touch you honestly and humanly, to share your joys and pains, to celebrate our lives and loves, then could we, my friend, revel in earth's beauty and share its wealth in harmony. Thank you. Thank you, Max. All my best to you during this season of light. Mm -hmm. So grateful for your poetry, your voice, and and, and the community that you create up in Edmonton for the poets, um, Stroll of Poets, and I know there's so, and so many Parkland Poetry. I know you're a member of many communities and, and uh, you know, all our villages together, all our villages together make that difference in the world. They truly do. Thank you. Well, I don't know if this was by design. It can't be, but I love this. That Kate Wegerson is reading in the open mic next before my final special guest joins us. Uh, I could go on for hours about Kate, but you, Kate, I believe, has read in every single one of our holiday poetry open houses and joins us for every special event. And I'm so grateful. 
And I wish you a happy holiday, my friend. I can't wait to hear what you're gonna share. Ho, ho, ho. There are people in the room and people from around the world that have shared with us in a way that our hearts are so enriched to know your love, your heart, your family, your fears, your tears. I just have been enriched along with each of you and you each know how much I love you. And so a miracle happened here. The Maccabees saved the day. There was enough oil to burn for eight days. Eight days of Hanukkah, eight days of Hanukkah. We sing and dance forever in a day. We live the life we choose, we fight and never lose. Those are our days forever. We live the life we choose. Happy Hanukkah, happy first day of Hanukkah. Opening up all of the traditions and knowing that poets take each of the traditions and expand it in a way that we become a globe, a true globe. I'm expanding out to you. If you don't know I love you, then there's something off. <laughs> so here's a sweet little poem that I did write. It's a quick tonka. I originally wrote it, surprise, surprise, in 2014. Full moon. Moon wakes evasive, my sleep searching for dream time. Sections of earth turn. Stroll out to the deck, moon set. Poetry scribe slept through the dawn. <laughs> Thank you so much. Here's a little chime in my heart for you. Come over and visit anytime, folks. Colorado. Woohoo! Hey, my Brazil. I love you so much. <laughs> I, love I love you too, and I am a winner. I win. I win each of you. Whatever you've shared with me, That's right. I've loved it. Everything. Woohoo! Right. We, we are all winners today. Because, we are all winners. Because, because we're together. That's right. That's right. I'll pick you up at the airport. Okay. I'll see you in, <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, my final guest for today. I was going to say my final guest for today, and I've been waiting all day, all day to hear the poetry of Linda V. Crawford. Oh my gosh. Woo! Woo! What a gift. What a gift to this world you are. What an absolute gift. And I am so grateful that you are part of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. And every time we hear you here on the program, we are moved and astounded. And I'm, again, I, I'm so glad that, that you're able to join us today as part of our holiday gift to each other. Um, thank you so much. And here is a little more of the formal biography of this beloved, beloved human. Oh, Linda B.E. Crawford 
was born and raised in Barbados and lives in the US. Both homes sway and punctuate her poetry. And if you've heard her poems, you know ex that is exactly what they do. Sway and punctuate, perfect. Linda writes to sneak behind eyes, blow through ears and stretch voices through her words. The Galway Review, the Bookends Review and Exposition Review recently published some of her poems. And of course, there will be more, there will be more. And how fortunate we are to be able to listen and take into our being the spirit that is the poetry of Linda V. E. Crawford. Um, I'm blessed to have Thank you. Thank you so much yeah you you're, you're just warming my heart i thank you so much this has i am sitting in southern california this has been an amazing an amazing afternoon so thank you when kim asked me to read and mentioned the theme of peace i thought my god i'd never write about peace so i started writing uh and this first poem i'm going to read two this first one is what came to me a few days ago uh, for the theme of peace. Cultivating peace. Stand still a moment. Count the number of wars conflagrating today. In between each number, a child is dying. In between each number, a playing child is hesitant. In between each drone, each rifle, each bomb, a child is trying to sleep. Stand still a moment. Stillness, yes. But that is not peace. Stillness is the space the breath inside and inhale and exhale. It is the moment to be still in the vibration of ancestors, your dear ones, others across our earth. In unison, they will hear us and for a moment somewhere, there will be peace. It is arduous, this breathing, the breath in between, and it's never ending until there is a vast expanse of peace. This breathing must continue. Welcome the breath in between. Thank you. And Thanks, I appreciate it. And this second poem of mine, I wrote it last February when Perseverance landed on Mars. However, it's about my grandmother, but then people and family and everyone across the earth who sometimes they will get it wrong, but that is not a reason to break. That is not a reason to avoid peace. And so I, I offer this, this, this piece as, as a way of saying, we love our dear family and our friends, even if we aren't always seeing eye to eye. And if we do that, there will be more peace on earth. What to keep and let go. At five years, I heard a wood dove sing and my grandma translate. Ooh, 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 ooh. Moses speaks God's word. I soaked up the haunt of her rediffusion, wired relay, 
her Herbert W. Armstrong's radio show, The World Tomorrow. At 16, on a bus ride home from school, sleep, excuse me, steeple bells rang, told my grandma's voice near, reminding me of her 69 trust pressed strongly onto my youth. No man can go to God's moon. They've gone to Israel's Mount Zion, she said. I wonder, did she smile when my ears released her clang song of bells or sigh in peace to hear my lips lilt toward our shared bird song? At 30, I kissed such songs into the moyo of my husband. Abambo, can you hear her guiding life into her children, into us and our sons? In my 40s and 50s, I dreamed. I stayed her close pinned hand, remembering how it clasped forced tradition, pinched my broadened nose. I long ago chose what to keep and let go, how to overcome tainted false history and the cross. At 65, I joined old and young in a cheer of perseverance, marking the span of immigrant curtilage from shed roof to Mars. I've discarded grandma's translations, wrong words, but I keep her cool and our widow's soft yearning song. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thank you. Thank, thank God, thank the spirits for our grandmothers. Because, But for our grandmothers, we all would not be here in this room today. Oh, those poems. Folks, thank you, Linda. And we, you know, in the spirit of giving and receiving, we have one more, we have one more gift for today. Is that right, Kim? Sure thing, if, you, if, you're, if you're offering, yes, we can do another one. Oh and yeah, I'm Linda, offering. Linda can um, give me a number between 11 and 20. Okay, 16. Okay. That would be my friend, Marcella Raymond. Marcella Raymond. I am so um, amazed at just everyone's incredible poetry. I like lost my words for a minute there, Sandy. That's all right. Well, Marcella. You will be receiving also a subscription to Poetry Re Ireland Review from Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Thank you so much. Everybody, I want to just say what an incredible afternoon, evening, morning. You know, it's timeless now. This holiday gathering has been, I've been sitting here with two little stuffed animals, Henry the zebra and Emmett, my little stife bear, Emmett, that I named Emmett because of, I visited Kim and I got this while, I got Emmett while I was with Kim and Kim lives on a road called Emmett. So I named him Emmett. And of course I love the name Emmett. 
because of Emmett Till. And so I feel very close to this little being, this little bear. Anyway, these two friends of mine have been listening to the poetry with their ears, their buttons in their ears. This is little Stife Bear and all the poetry today has come from our heart and has come from the spirit of what it's been like to be in Cultivating Voices Live Poetry and, and to share this thing that we have been called to do, which is to write poetry. And I wanna just read one final poem in that spirit. It's a poem by Pablo Neruda. And I want to dedicate it to one of our members who, um, Rachel Gomez from New Zealand, who couldn't be with us here today. Um, and I want to send it out to all the creatures, our furry creatures, and all the, the ways that we also and experience that creaturedom within us. And this is a poem by Pablo Neruda called Cat's Dream. And normally I'd read it both in the Spanish and in the English. I'm just gonna do the English version today. Cat's Dream. How neatly a cat sleeps with its paws and its posture, sleeps with its wicked claws and with its unfeeling blood, sleeps with all the rings, a series of burnt circles, which have formed the odd geology of its sand-colored tail. I should like to sleep like a cat, with all the fur of time, with a tongue rough as flint, with the dry sex of fire, and after speaking to no one, stretch myself over the world, over roofs and landscapes, with a passionate desire to hunt the rats in my dreams. I have seen how the cat sleeps, would undulate, how the night flowed through it like dark water. And at times it was going to fall or possibly plunge into the bare deserted snowdrifts. Sometimes it grew so much in sleep like a tiger's great grandfather and would leap in the darkness over rooftops clouds and volcanoes. Sleep, sleep, cat of the night, and with Episcopal ceremony and your stone-carved mustache, take care of all of our dreams. Control the obscurity of our slumbering prowess with your relentless heart and the great rough of your tail. That's Pablo Neruda's Hat's Dream. My little gift to Rachel Gomez, to Kim who just got two new cats, and to all of you out there in Cultivating Voices live poetry land. Take care of all of your dreams. Take care of all of your dreams. We have been able to dream together this year and particularly today on our holiday poetry open house. I've had so many guests here today and the abundance has overwhelmed me in the best possible way, filling my heart with all that is poetry. I want to say thank you to my special guests today, Patrick Lodge, Anne McDonald, Elaine Nadal, Josephine Lore, Thomas A. Thomas, Linda V. Crawford, and the scores and scores of you that read in the open mic today. It would take me the next half hour to read the whole list. 
you know who you are. We know who you are. Ho, po, o, our holiday poetry open house. Let's unmute and show our appreciation for all of today's readers and to each one of you for your contribution to our community. Bravissimo. Very nice. Fantastic. Julio. Deck the halls with boughs of harmony. gay apparel. Let me sing before the whole congregation. There we go. We can all get drunk now with Mrs. Santa Claus. I don't even drinking water here today, my friends. I wish everybody, and uh, first of all, thank you to each and every one of you again. Thank you to Don Krieger, Kim Ports Parsons for all the work during this year. And thanks for all the work that each of you do to bring poetry to this platform when we congregate on Sundays and some for some of you Mondays to listen and learn and feel our hearts, feel our hearts. Sometimes it's, it's hard to feel our hearts. And, and I feel this is one way that I'm able to do that. Well, as I said, I wish all of you the most, uh, you know, the, the best, the best that this season of light can bring to you with however you celebrate um, the season. Of, of course, Hanukkah and Christmas, solstice, Kwanzaa, there's many, many rituals across the world for this, uh, at this time of year. And I, I wish you all the peace and prosperity and love that you can muster during this season with you and your beloveds. And a reminder that we will be back in 2023. We will return on January 8th. For oh, no, I'm of... turning 70 on January 4th. How can you not come back until the 8th? I'm going to be 70. Yeah. Woo. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right. We'll have a party with you on the 8th. And it's our poet's focus. And the word is home. We're going to begin the year on the theme of home. There's a vast, vast range of how you can bring poems that evoke that sense of home, that sense of place, and, and all the other things. There's home, there's home insecurity. Um, you know, there's many, many ways, but I want to invite you back with us in the new year. And we'll start us off with this theme on home. And of course, it'll be another year of new book showcases coming up. And our open mics where you all are always and forever the stars. Well, you, we've stayed so long today. It's been one of our epic readings. It's been a great party. It's been a great party. I raise my glass to you all in the spirit of the season. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Uh, congratulations to our winners, but we're all winners, as you all know. I, I'm glad we could get some poetry out into for to some of you, and we'll be contacting you about how to get those prizes, those gifts to you in the mail. And in the meantime, everybody, I, I hope you will again enjoy this season of light with your beloveds. 
as I always, always say at the end of the program, the end of every program, you know, take very good care of yourselves. Take exquisite care of your beloveds and keep writing, keep writing your miraculous poems. Happy holidays. Ho, ho, oh, this has been our holiday poetry open house. I am so grateful and we'll see you in 2023.